So this chapter shows you how to build the last missing bits of the temporary system, the tools needed to build various packages. Now that all circular dependencies have resolved, resolved a true environment completely isolated from the host operating system, obviously except the running kernel can be used for the build. <clears throat> for proper operation of the isolated environment, some communication with the running kernel must be established. This is done via the so-called virtual kernel file systems, which will be mounted before entering the true environment. You may want to verify that they are mounted by issuing the find mount command. So until entering the true environment, the commands must be run as root, which with the LFS variable set after entering the root, all commands are run as root. Fortunately, without access to the OS of the computer you're building LFS on. So, but we've still got to be careful because we are root. So as it says, we've got to become root now. So let's do that. Just log out of LFS. Echo the $LFS variable. Make sure that's still set, which it is. <clears throat> and the next thing we've got to do is to change ownership of everything we've done so far to be owned by the root now. Um, as effectively, they're all system files. So let's do that. And now we move on and prepare the virtual kernel file system. So first of all, we need to create some directories for these virtual file systems to be mounted on. Populate dev. And then mount the remaining file systems. So we've done dev PTS, we've done proc, that's sys, and finally we've got run. And there's some explanations there. Um, it says in some host systems, dev SHM is a symbolic link to a directory. The run tempfs was mounted above, so in this case only the directory needs to be created with the correct permissions. In other host systems, dev SHM is a mount point for a tempfs. In that case, the mount of dev above will only create the dev SHM as a directory in the true environment. In this situation, we must explicitly mount a tempfs. So we can run this and it will do the right thing. Um, you can see it's test to see what sort of file the dev SHM is. And you can see that it says tempfs mounted on MNT LFS dev SHM. So now we enter the true environment and they've modified this over time so that make flags is set to the number of logical processors and also a test suite flags has been set as well to also match the number of logical processors. So we don't need to make any adjustments anymore like we used to do. It's all there for us in the book. Now we create some more directories. And it does say they've either been created um, when installing, either with explicit instructions or installing some packages, but they're repeated below for completeness. So we'll just do these one at a time, make sure that everything works for each command. A bit tedious, but it's a good, safe way of doing this to make sure that they are um, in existence and that they have been created correctly. Okay, so that's the directories created. We've got a couple of sim links to create.
and then a couple more directories with special permissions set on them which is why the install command is used so that's done there's a note there about the FHS some essential files and sim links so we link create a link there create a basic hosts file and a basic etc password file and a groups file some packages need a locale so we set that and create a tester for some tests and then we execute uh, another login to get rid of the I have no name and you can see that's gone now it knows the name of the user it can be resolved create a couple of empty well, so several empty files and change some of the ownership details and the permissions on those files and we can carry on building the additional tools in this true environment starting with get text so we need to change into sources so because we're in this true environment we're already in the uh, mnt lfs directory but that's now hidden the root is our new system um, so if i look at mnt this is a different mnt this is the mnt under mnt lfs um, and everything above this root directory is now hidden because we're in this true environment so that means we just go straight to forward slash sources now and that contains our list of source archive packages so same procedure as before we extract the package change into it and carry on with the instructions in the book Okay, let's start the build now.
Right, so that's built. We just copy a few programs that we need at this point and tidy up. So Bison next. Configure it. Build it and install. And we move on to Perl next. So we prepare for compilation with this configure command. And build it. and install it. Okay, it's done. So next we've got Python. One thing to remember that the Python package we're interested in, well, as it says there in the note, starts with a capital P. So start with the configuration for the build. And build it. That's all done. Let's install and tidy up. Next, we've got text info to build. Straightforward build instructions. Pile it and install it. Util Linux next. So we make a directory and 
configure the build. Right, so now we can compile that. And install it. And that's done. Move on to cleaning up and saving the temporary system. So we can tidy up what we've installed because it's unneeded. There's some documentation here, some libtool archives, and we can now delete the tools directory as well because that's not needed either. Make some more space. It says here about um, backing up the system. Um, might be an idea to do if you're a bit unsure um, because it does mean that if you do mess up in the actual building the LFS system you can come back to this point and then restart from this point um, generally as long as you follow the instructions uh, closely um, it's not a problem there shouldn't be any problem but you may want to do this uh, just to be on the safe side um, it's, it's well yeah I'd say probably not really necessary as long as you're careful building the LFS system, um, you could do it. So let's move on to building the LFS system then.